And so it's a case that is raising some concerns, certainly, about a product that many of you may have in your bathroom cabinet this morning. An Alabama family has been awarded $72 million in a lawsuit against Johnson & Johnson over talcum powder. Now, Jacqueline Fox died of ovarian cancer at the age of 62. She used Johnson & Johnson's talc-based baby powder and showered a shower for, for years. This week, a jury in St. Louis found the company liable for her death. Now, her family said the lawsuit really was not about the money, but about warning other women. Her whole fight was for not just for her, but so many other women. And that's why I continued that's why I continue this fight. So it's interesting because this is really raising questions about the safety of this product. It's important to note, though, that the large judgment was awarded not because it was proven during the trial that talcum powder causes cancer, but because of evidence that was put forth in testimony that suggested the company tried to cover up a possible link. Now, the company plans to appeal the verdict and says its products are safe. So we wanted certainly to get the perspective of a local oncologist. Joining me now is Dr. Scott Ackerman of the Ackerman Cancer Center. Good morning to you. Good morning, Jennifer. You know, you see this headline, $72 million, you know, baby powder, talcum powder, and it's easy to just jump to conclusions that this may not be safe. What is it about talcum powder that was such an issue particularly years ago? Because, I mean, I remember being warned, and my kids are 8 and 11, not to use this on my babies when they were young. So talcum powder, uh, there's not a lot of good science suggests uh, connecting talcum powder to cancer. Okay. Some studies have shown that people who use it in, in large amounts have a slightly increased risk of cancers, and others have shown that it hasn't. And the problem with these studies is it relies on people to remember how much they've used. So these studies are, are, are weak because who can remember what we had for dinner a year ago? Or, right. or So it's hard to really quantitate that. But... The talcum powder is made of magnesium and silica, and it's mined. And back in the pre-1970s, when it was mined and when it was produced, there was asbestos in talcum powder. There was some asbestos in there, and we didn't fully understand asbestos and the health effects of asbestos back then, but we do know now, and we did know in the late 60s and early 70s about asbestos. Asbestos can cause lung cancer, uh, mesotheliosis, can cause also cancers in the abdomen as well. And when the, that link between asbestos and cancer was made, that's when asbestos was removed from, uh, from talcum powder. So why then would this or could this possibly be dangerous? Because of a different, you know, ingredient or just, hey, you know, better safe than sorry? Well, I think it's really better safe than sorry. There's lots of things that we are exposed to that we inhale that can cause problems, secondhand smoke, you know, when you do microwave popcorn and stuff, you know, we, we're, we're told to, to avoid that now. And when you use baby powder and you're using, or talcum powder, same thing, when you're using it in large amounts, it goes in the air and you inhale it. So we need to be careful about these things that go into our body, go into our lungs. They bounce around a bit, and I think it's prudent just to, to minimize that exposure to these sort of things. Talcum powder without asbestos, modern talcum powder, we're not sure the connection. There may be a connection. My guidance is to use it in, in sparingly. Uh, I think that people who use a lot of it and they're inhaling it a lot, that could have health effects. And there's health effects that we don't even know about yet that could be from these things that we inhale, these inhalants. So the issue then really, because you hear ovarian cancer and you think, you know, more gynecological, the issue here is, is, the, is inhaling it, not necessarily it being absorbed into the skin, or could it be both? No, no, no. For, um, for ovarian cancer, the studies that looked at the relationship between ovarian cancer and talcum powder were in women who used it in the, in the pelvic area, in the genital area, uh, in, in heavy amounts. Mm -hmm. And again, that was based on what, they, what the recollection was, how much they used. And that was, and so the... The postulate is that it gets absorbed and goes up through the um, genital system into the uterus and into the ovaries areas, and the talc kind of stays there and may, and may cause some irritation. So do you recommend then not using this? I recommend using it sparingly. If you're concerned about the health effects of talc causing cancer, you can use other products <clears throat> similar to talc that there's never been a connection to cancer, like cornstarch. Cornstarch, I, in fact, when my patients who are getting radiation treatment, I, try, I tell them to avoid using baby powder because of the magnesium in it, and that magnesium can interfere with radiation treatments. So they, I recommend um, cornstarch products all the time. Um, they're much, much more safe. Um, and so, again, if people are, are considering using baby powder or talc, use it sparingly, or if you're concerned, use um, 
cornstarch. Thank you very much, Dr. Thanks, Scott Jack. Ackerman. I know a lot of people will be talking about this. It's good to have that clarification. So if you missed any of this information, by the way, or you would like to read more about the Johnson & Johnson lawsuit, you can find it all on newsforjax.com with this entire interview later this morning.